said, I'm going to give a really, really quick primer uh, on futures thinking. So at KnowledgeWorks, I, I'm, I'm very proud to be part of a team of four uh, very, very talented futurists. Uh, <clears throat> we are blessed to be able to explore long range futures for learning and for education. And what you see here uh, on the screen, it's something called the cone of plausibility. It's not really a foresight method, but it is a fantastic foresight teaching tool. And it's used to do a, a few things. Um, but for our purposes, it's to describe the, this idea that the future is many, but not one. A lot of times, uh, futurists will uh, refer to what we call like the three Ps. So those include plausible futures. Uh, these are things that if we look at the bounds of uncertainty and change, um, you know, have a, a, maybe a decent chance of happening. We have possible futures. This of course means anything could happen. Um, and indeed anything could happen. I could win the lottery. It's probably not likely, but it is possible. And then our third P is, it's my favorite P. Uh, it's the preferable future, it's the vision. So the major difference here is we might say that plausible and possible futures really deal with inbound change. We're making assumptions about that change. We're thinking about what kind of futures they might create. Preferable futures, on the other hand, are, are more soundly rooted in outbound change. This is what we want to happen. This is how we're going to respond to those changes. So rather than be more rooted in assumption, they're more rooted in our values. They're signaling to the world what we want from the future. Uh, similar to the question that I asked you to all to, when we open this up. Uh, and they're really acting as a North Star. So as we navigate change, how are we going to adapt our plans and, and design new offerings to bring us closer to those visionary futures?